Have you ever wanted to become a scuba diver? No? Me neither. But hop on over to our Patreon and become a diver to receive exclusive benefits like early and ad-free access to audio episodes, monthly live streams with the founders of Dive Studios, and so much more. These episodes are made possible by our divers, so thank you for keeping us going. Join us at patreon.com backslash dive studios. Thank you. Debak Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the life-changing, ever-impactful, socially relevant, and culturally important show, The Tebak Show. I'm your host, Eric Nam, and today we have a very, very special treat for all of our amazing listeners. We are joined by a, I want to say like a, a music legend in Indonesia in her own right. Um, I've been really excited to connect with her, and I cannot wait to get to know her more, and I, and I hope you guys are excited to get to know her as well. We are joined today by the incredibly talented Raisa Andriana. Hey, how are you? Hi, that's an amazing pronunciation of my name. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. I was slightly <laughs> stressed thank you so out. Much for, thank you so much for practicing so vigilantly. You know what, I felt like it was the least that I could do uh, to, to give you a warm welcome, but I'm glad I got it on uh, on the nose, I guess. But before we get started, could you go ahead and please say hello and introduce yourself to all our listeners? Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Raisa. I'm very, very happy to be here. Slightly nervous, but that's okay. I think Eric will make me feel at home. And yeah, just just ready to chat. Awesome. Well, nothing to be nervous about. Um, why, but why are you nervous? Why are you nervous? What, what's making you nervous right now? I'm nervous because, first of all, it's Eric Nam. And then second of all, I haven't spoken in English for like <laughs> months. <laughs> so I hope my English isn't very rusty. Oh, Just well, a little rusty. You sound great. And um, flip side, I'm, I feel like I'm like, it's, it's Raisa. I should be more nervous than you. So you know what? It's a mutual nervousness that I think will lead to some great conversation. But yes. I mean, let's to to set the stage for our listeners. Um, we've never met. I don't really know you. I don't mm. think I don't know if you know me very well, but we've never had a conversation. So it's going to be a a mutual mm. getting to know each other. It feels like yes, um, which is always yes. always fun. Um, but to start us off, where are you calling from? Are you in Indonesia right now? Yep, I'm in Jakarta right now. And where are you? I am in L.A. I just got to L.A. So I bad. see. I thought you were in Dubai. I was. I just got back, and you're the first person that I'm talking to in in LA. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you for for calling and saying you're you arrive okay. Yeah, I'm I'm great. I'm just letting everybody know I'm fine. I got him from Dubai. Okay. Um, okay. But I'm I guess firm. to get to know you a little bit, like you were born and raised mm -hmm. in Jakarta. Yes. Yes, I did. And uh, family. Tell us about your family. Mom, dad, any siblings? What's going on? You know what? I, I watched your interview with Sam Kim. And it's hilarious that he doesn't remember <laughs> his brothers. <laughs> so I, I'm very like… I was, I was checking on my father. And I'm, sh I'm making sure that I get his age correct. And my mom's age. <laughs> <laughs> like when my brother was born and where. I got all that, that um, info completely straight up. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. So, so give I, us give us a quick I know my family. Give us a quick rundown of your family tree. And for listeners who don't know what's going on, last time Sam was on the <laughs> show, I was like, Hey, tell us about your brothers and sisters, your siblings. And he was like, I don't know how old they are. And I was like, Do you even know their name? And I I don't even know if he remembered their <laughs> names correctly. Um, and so I'm glad that you know your family, but could you tell us about yes. your family? <laughs> So basically, um, I was born and raised in Jakarta. And um, yeah, I started singing when I was really, really young. My mom used to be a, a singer, oh. but she gave, gave her up her dreams for us, for the children. She decided to be a stay-at-home mom, which is the hardest job of all. Yeah. And um, I started singing when I was three years old, according to my parents. And yeah, but I was really quite introverted when I was a child. So I wasn't, you know, I didn't want to be a star since I was a, mm -hmm. a kid, you know. So I started, 
I think pretty late. I was um, probably 17, 18 when I, you know, really got into that musical band type situation. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Like, how did you get started? Because I, I think it's, you know, I'm sure there's millions of kids around the world who are like, I want to be a singer. Mm. And it doesn't work out for mm. everybody. I think you and I both were very lucky in the sense that we're able to pursue yeah. something that we absolutely love. But how did you yeah. start? And was there a big breaking moment for you to get into the industry? Like I said, I wasn't very um, showy as a kid. So I was just like, I like to sing at home. We have mm-hmm. a little karaoke machine that I always sing with my mom. Um, but I wasn't really, you know, I want to be a star or anything. So I was really, really shy. Um, and I have a lot of dreams. I have a lot of um, things I want to do. But at the end of the day, the one thing that I keep coming back to is singing and music. Mm-hmm. And so when I was, I think, um, in high school, yeah, in high school, I got my first paid um, singing gig. It was a demo. I was recording a demo for Visit Indonesia at that time. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So it was a demo for someone else to sing. But then I get money and I can buy something for myself. And it's like, this is the best thing ever. (laughs) I get to buy something and I don't have to ask, you know, permission from my mom or or dad. This is, this sounds bad. This sounds like my motivation is money. No, 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 no. You found… Because here's no, the thing. Like, with music, it's hard to make a living off of music. And so yeah, the fact that you yeah. did, it's a great thing. No, but that makes me think that… Oh, I, I actually can… You know, this is actually a career that I can… You know, that I can start. So I think that was the, the very first experience I have with um, music as a job or as a career. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I started… Um, you know, going, um, finding myself uh, friends who can, and then we perform a band and yeah. And then we started trying to produce songs and just, I sang at cafes, at birthdays, at weddings and stuff like that. And it was really, really fun. And when I was 18, it was, I think one of the first times anyone had interacted with YouTube Mm-hmm. I think it was 2007 or 2008. I don't know. Um, but it was when I was starting uh, going on YouTube. Really, really bad quality. I was in my bedroom. There was no music. I was singing a cappella, And yeah, but it was really what kept me going. But then um, I, I met my producer who at the time was my friend in campus. Mm-hmm. But he also has a band and has a album. So he was like the first, the first one that, that asked me, like, do you want me to produce your album? I think you can really be something because there was a gap in, um, in female soloists at the time. And so, yeah, we made that album. It was a two years, I think, process of, of writing that album. Wow. And yeah. I mean, two years on an album, that's like a very, that's a very long time. But when you put your music out, was it immediate success? Was it immediate reaction from, from your fans and from people who were listening to your music? I would say my career is um, very a slow and steady um, uphill, mm. um, how do you call it? Endeavor. Journey. Yes. Up and up. Journey. Steady journey. Yeah. Yes. A slow and steady journey uh, that's going uphill at the time and very steady right now. And there's no one defining moment Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, you know, that made me who I am today. But it was, everything was really, really nice and slow and steady. And I I love every process of it Mm -hmm. because it made me… as a person and, and as, a, as an artist, it makes me really, really be present and know what's going on around me. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't have too much trouble getting into, into uh, the entertainment industry. 
All right, everybody, this week's episode of The Tabak Show is brought to you in part by our sponsor, BetterHelp. And we love BetterHelp because they're helping us live our most fulfilled, most amazing, best lives ever possible through the amazing work that they do. Now, BetterHelp is the online affordable alternative to offline counseling. And you know, there's nothing wrong with talking to somebody about whatever it is that you may be going through. Uh, you may be going through anxiety, stress, depression, uh, trauma, just a lot of issues. Whatever it is that you're going through, BetterHelp has counselors and therapists that are available. They're professional. They are licensed, real people that are able to walk you through whatever it is that you're going through. I personally think there's so much value in going through and talking about these issues, not even issues, whatever it is you're going through in life. So I highly, highly recommend you guys checking it out. It's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Now, if you are a listener of this podcast, I want you to start living a happier life today. And as a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash kpop. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kpop. Now back to our show. For our listeners who do not know, you have won yeah. literally so many awards and you have achieved so many different things like I'm like, I have an outline here in front of me, guys, and there's, I would go through, but there's literally too many <laughs> accomplishments <laughs> for me to list off. You just have to trust me when I tell you that she's had such an illustrious and successful career in music, but also in many other things, you know, um, you're also very recently the first official Lancome brand partner in Indonesia. Um, you've done songs for Disney. You've done yeah. so many albums that have been bestsellers. Um, and you were also supposed to be the first Indonesian female singer to perform a solo concert at a stadium, which unfortunately was postponed due to COVID, I believe. Um, yes. It's, it's a lot. You've also won Mama Awards, two of them. There's so many different things. When you take a step back and you look at your career and you take a look at your life, mm. what is it that's kept you very grounded and going? Because it's, I think it's, one thing to have all the success, but there's another thing to continue mm -hmm. to want to do it and to stay very grounded, level-headed, and healthy in pursuing it. How mm -hmm. have you managed yes. to balance yes. all of that? Um, well, first, as I said, it, nothing about this is instant. So mm -hmm. I think I have time to actually process and to actually… Um, finding ways to be grounded and normal every single day. And second of all is my, for sure, my inner circle. Mm -hmm. Like my friends and my family, um, they kept me really, really grounded. And I, my best friends are my friends from, like literally from kindergarten. We, we mm -hmm. used to live together and they always, you know, they always confirmed to me that I indeed am still the same person that I was like years and years ago. So yeah. that's always, always um, essential to have. And also I'm, I have a very, very loyal team. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's very important to me to, to just circle myself with, with such incredible loyal people mm -hmm. that, that is always will want the best for you. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's great. Yeah. It's, it's incredible that you have that type of circle and that grounded mm -hmm. thing. All of that. This is a this is a little more of a personal question, but I've I've actually been following uh -huh. you and your music for I don't know five or six years. I think um, it's been I a while. I am so shocked. Why? <laughs> yeah, but why? <laughs> How? I I, I was have just we like met? we have we met. have not met. We have not just, met. Um, yes. I came across your music and I just. I really liked it and I thought it was just very pleasant and like pleasing and easy to listen to. And I just started following you in your career. Mm -hmm. I would see things on my feed, on my socials of like what you were doing. And um, so that's why when you reached out, I was like, oh, of course, like I'd love to have you on the show. Um, and it was, Thank you. it just felt like a final like full circle moment of us kind of finally getting to connect. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing that was actually very surprising to me is like, I think, I mean, you and I were, I think we're still pretty young. Um, but you also got married, I think, at a relatively early age compared to a lot of mm. people who may be in the industry. Um, yeah. Especially from a, a view or a lens of K-pop where 
I feel like dating or getting married is such a, it's like almost taboo, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, you're… I was going to say taboo, but… Yeah, it's taboo because it's just like, it's all like hush, hush. You're not supposed to date. You're not supposed to get married, that kind of thing. But when I saw yeah. like you were getting married, you also have a beautiful daughter who's two years old. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, she's like so accomplished in so many different ways, but has a great balance of like what she wants and what she needs in her life. Was that anything mm-hmm. like that worrying for you in Indonesia? Or is it a difference of like culture and entertainment where it doesn't really you know, matter as much? I was just kind of curious. Actually, I kept my professional and personal life pretty separate. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, um, I kind of get the hang of juggling it both. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think um, my image really, really um, clashed in the way that because I am a wife and a mother that I have to always sing about my marriage or my kid, you know? Yeah. I, I didn't feel that pressure and I, I intentionally keep it that way because mm-hmm. who I am on stage is whoever the viewers want me to be. Yeah. And whoever, whatever my song wants, um, wants it to be, you know? And yeah. my personal life is, is my personal life. So, um, yeah, at first it was it was quite a, you know, it was quite a a challenge for me because I don't want to hide my mm-hmm. personal life because I'm happy, but I also don't want it to be the the vocal point of how everyone sees me, mm. you know, Mm-mm-mm-mm. and how everyone expects of me, you know, just uh, maybe like in a. I don't want to appear in like a diaper commercial and, <laughs> you know, formula commercial. And um, yeah. and then the next day I'm, yeah. I'm singing about heartbreak. And right. it's just, right, right. doesn't go right in my mind. So um, I intentionally keeps it always um, separate. I think that's, I think that's such a great way of having rephrased that and how you're approaching mm-hmm. it. Because I think… Um, a, it's a healthy mindset to have. Um, but also because I think, again, like, yeah, your personal life is your personal life. And that's just what it is. And it shouldn't define the type of music or the artistry that you are able to do or that you want to do. And I think that's awesome that that's how yeah. you approach it. Um, yeah. But yeah, why not? Most definitely. I <laughs> yeah. agree with you. Um, now… Going back to kind of like the music side, you've also worked with some incredible, incredible musicians. Um, David Foster, who's a songwriting legend. Brian McKnight, Babyface, so many incredible people. Um, And next up, from what I hear, you have a song coming out with Sam Kim. Um, Yes. Which is, I'm so excited to hear. Sam called me probably like three, four months ago. And I was like, yo, what have you been up to? What are you working on? And he was like, I'm working on these projects. One of them is with Raisa. And I was like, I love Raisa. I cannot believe you guys are working together. So excited to hear it. No way. Yeah. Um, So I was super excited. Can you tell us about this song um, and how this came about? Basically, I'm a huge fan of Sam's music. Mm -hmm. I've been following him and I'm a a big fan of his album, Sun and Moon. And so… you know, I, I I use his songs a lot for inspiration when I was also writing my my album. And, you know, just it's just a crazy idea that maybe Sam wants to do a project with me. So I, as any other relationship these days, it started with a DM. <laughs> so, I, so I DM'd him uh, whilst my company is, is DMing his um, company, Antenna. And, you know, he… I think he researched me and just like what I do. And that's it. He's very, very… It was an amazing collaboration because he really, really took the time to get to know me. Mm -hmm. And we actually became friends. And then we started on that project. Mm. So it's a very healthy way to approach a collaboration and songwriting experience. Yeah. So it was amazing. I can't… I think we… We can send you a song for a preview maybe after this. Please, please do. Um, I think this episode will probably come out right around the time that the song is 
is being put out. Yeah. But for people who yeah. haven't checked out the song yet, could you tell us the name of the yeah. song and what it's about and like mm. how the process was in writing it? Did did you guys kind of do it all together or I'm just mm. I'm just curious about that. The song is called Someday. Mm-hmm. It's about mm, I think it's about uh two big egos in a relationship mm-hmm. that when you just talk to each other, everything could be so easy and so just right. But then you have this ego that you just can't talk to each other. And, and each one of them says, just say it. Just say it to me. Just talk to me. Just say what you want to say as if this is the last time you're going to hear from me. Mm. So it's like desperation. It's like sweet relationship tragedy song, you know. Because, um, you know, how Sam is just, his voice is just so sweet and so like, uh, I just love him. <laughs> and, um, and you know, how it, it's going to match with my, my sound. And so we, we're trying to make like a sweet R&B, very easy listening song with a bit of a little, I call it a little diva moment at the end. Oh, a little diva moment. I can't wait for this diva yeah. moment. Um, yes. And Sam was like, oh my God, I've never had a, a song with a diva moment before. So <laughs> it's really interesting. There's a first time for everything. Um, I, I'm so excited to hear it. Um, so is this song, is it in English? Is it in Korean and Indonesian? Like what, mm-hmm. how does this work linguistically? So this song is in full English. Okay. So that we can, you know, we can just reach a, a, a broader market, I think, and for everyone just to listen to it. And you were, oh, you were, you were asking about the making of the song. Yeah. Well, basically, we were, we were video chatting each other, I think, close to 10 times before we actually record. Mm. So uh, it was a long process. It was, it was like what, probably one and a half years to make. Wow. Because we all, yeah, because we have projects of our own. And Sam, during this time, Sam, I think, released like three or four singles. And I also released my album. So it was um, always with my project. It's slow and steady. But at the end, we got the result that we wanted. And a friendship is, has blossomed. And the song really sounds like the both of us combined and re- really sounds like um, the kind of song that I, I listen to all the time mm-hmm. and also the song that I don't have on my album. So mm-hmm. at the end, it was, it was all worth it. I hope, I hope Sam feels the same way. I'm, I'm sure he does. He was really excited about it when I spoke to him. Um, so I cannot wait to, to hear it. I'm sure it will be on my playlist. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited. Um, so this show uh, kind of originated out of K-pop. Um, in many ways. Mm. Are you a big like K-pop fan listener or K-drama or Korean content person as well? First of all, first and foremost, I'm a K-food enthusiast. Oh, okay. Okay. What yes. Do you have a go-to K-food, had... a favorite K-food? Um, I love sundubu jjigae. Oh. That's my that's my favorite because I'm a soupy person. Okay. And also just Korean barbecue. I go to a Korean barbecue joint like every week. Oh. It's insane. <laughs> do you have I have a, to, I have to have, cut down. <laughs> no, you should eat whatever you want. Do you have like a favorite cut? Is it beef? Is it chicken? Like what, what's your favorite go-to order? It's beef. Oh my God, I forgot the name. But it's like… Um, the ribs that's marinated. Galbi. Yang yum Galbi. Galbi. Yes. yes. Oh man. That's my favorite. I'll... You're making and me hungry. Usoro. I think I think after this interview, I'm literally gonna go get Sundubu Kalbi with yes. combo. Because I have not eaten yet and I'm I'm starving. Have you been to Korea? You have to have been to Korea, right? I've been. I've I've been to Korea. I actually shot a video there. Oh. Uh, it's my uh, in my song called uh, LDR, long distance relationship. Um, I've been there, I think, three or four times. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, always had an amazing time shopping beauty stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, when you go to a store and you buy one mask and you have 
three freebies, like three bags yeah. of freebies. It's the best. That's the best. It's <laughs> amazing. It's it, literally. It's really like you buy one thing, but they give you 10 samples. And you're like, are you actually making yeah. money on this? Or what is, what's, what's the play here? How is this working out? Um, I know. I, I don't even have to buy gifts from my friends. I just give them the freebies and they think I'm, you know, I'm awesome. The most generous person in the world. Absolutely. I know. <laughs> um, yes. All right. So we have a, a bunch of questions from your fans that actually yes. we were sent. So I was hoping we can mm. go through some of these. Um, so you ready? Ready. All right. Here we go. This is from Mace Me on Instagram. I'd like to ask, what's your favorite song of yours and why? What's your most personal favorite song that you have? <sighs> it's so difficult. So hard. I know. You, Yeah. You must ask… The, been asked this question a lot too and you can't answer. Or can you? I feel like I always have a different answer. It's it's yeah. on the day of. It's it, like this… I thought of this today. And, it, and right now this is my favorite song. Exactly. Uh, it depends on your mood. But I think my favorite song right now is a newer song that I, I wrote last year. It's called Love and Let Go. Mm. Because it's, uh, it's totally a an ode to a 90s ballad that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. So when you hear it, it sounds like the 90s. And when yeah. you sing it, you kind, of, you kind of know where this song is going because it's already in your head. It, it's those kind of songs. For me as well, writing it, I'm just like, keep writing and keep writing and keep writing. And I'm ask, I just ask my producers like, is, has this song already exist? Because it's already <laughs> in my head. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and that, that became my favorite. And I'll, I also really like the lyrics to that song. I, I know exactly what you mean. When you're writing a song and you're like, wait, am I, I don't mean to be plagiarizing, but am I plagiarizing? Because this is so, <laughs> I, I feel like I, I, I've known it. But when you, when you yeah. figure out that it, it isn't someone else's song, you're like, this is, this is such a good song. I can't believe I did this. I know, I know, I know. Yes, I can't believe no one has thought about this. I know, and it feels am, so am good. I, am I the first one? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's my favorite song. Okay, well, and I'm going to ask this of you. And if it's too much, mm -hmm. we can literally pass on and we just edit this. But yeah. if, if it is it possible, could you sing us just like your favorite part or just a little bit of that song? For sure. I'll, I'll sing to you the, the, the chorus. And I, I really like… Uh, the lyrics also. So maybe you can relate. Don't be afraid to ever let me go. Just say you hope that I will find what I'm searching for. Because time and time again, I stay true. But this time I won't choose you. Oh, I never meant to hurt you. But set me free for now. And I will come find you. Oh my gosh. You guys, That's my it. heart's like fluttering. I feel like, oh my <laughs> gosh, that was so good. Thank you for Thank singing you. that. So good. But you know I'm, what I you know what I mean about the about it's the a, melody. Da, 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 da. Is that like, yeah. But like, also, can we talk about that crazy little moment where you go from full to head to falsetto and it's so effortless for you? <laughs> so cool. That's, that's my thing. Thank I know. you. Which collaboration stage was the most unforgettable for you? This is from Des Nazari. Obviously, Sam Kim, we haven't heard yet. No, we haven't heard yet. Uh. So with that one aside, um, mm -hmm. any any particular moments where you collaborated with somebody that you're like, man, this was yes. so cool. Which one yes. was that? For sure. For sure, Brian McKnight. Oh. No contest. Uh, what was that I like? Am He's literally my like my music god, like literally. Mm. Everyone, everyone in Indonesia knows, um, yeah, how I feel about Brian McKnight. And if I'm on a radio show, whatever, they always ask me to sing Brian McKnight's song, and so I'm like very associated with him because I always talk about him. And then um, I've watched him before. Um, and I was like literally crying as an audience mm. because it was just too unreal. Mm. But by the time it happens, I think my my professional side takes over and I'm like, don't ruin this for yourself because you're going <laughs> to hate yourself forever. If you like, you know, you, you, your nerve gets to you. And it, he was just super humble and he 
And we haven't met before. So he came to my dressing room. Oh, I, I came to his dressing room and he was with a guitar and we were just jamming the song that we were going to do that night. And it was like, is this even real? And with the, the mm. reverb of the room and everything and the guitar. And it was like Brian McKnight singing literally in front of me. It was amazing. And, and I did, hopefully I did a great job that night. And so regrets nothing. And yeah, that was definitely the best experience I've had uh, collaborating with, with my idol. That's so, so cool. What, what did you guys sing together? We sang One Last Cry. Ah, I love that song. I love that song. Such That's a good song. That's amazing. And he, and he made, and he let me do all the cool, cool parts. The runs and everything. My yeah, shadow he, he lets dreams. Me. Oh. oh. Um, I, have a, I have a Brian McKnight story. Uh, he came to Korea. And there, somebody was like, hey, do you want to meet Brian McKnight? I was like, of course I would like to meet Brian McKnight. And so we went to a Kyrie place called Mapu Kyrie. In Cheongdam, and I had barbecue oh. with Ryan McKnight, um, and we ended up smelling like barbecue, obviously. And I was like, "Why am I? Uh, how am I here? Why am I here having Korean barbecue with Brian McKnight?" And then the, he was <laughs> like, "Hey, come to the show tomorrow." So I go. Um, I watch his entire sound check, and I was like, "Holy sheesh!" Like his everything for him is so effortless. Like yes, the instruments, the runs, everything. And then I go backstage to hang out with him um, oh. before his show. And I'm like, being like a young, you know, early musician. It's like, Sir Brian McKnight, what do you do to warm up your voice? I'm like, God, shut up, Eric. Like, what? Don't talk. Don't say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, oh, I don't really do anything. I just watch uh, my iPad. And he had like a movie playing. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to leave now. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> but he was so nice Everything and he's so good. Oh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh my god! But that was while such... you kept your cool, I could not keep my cool. Um, so I we balanced it out for each other. <laughs> yeah. No, but after after uh, we did the song, I you know I lost it, you know. Mm. But yeah, at least at least I I I did good on my singing. Oh man, I'm gonna find this on YouTube. It has to be somewhere on YouTube. I'm sure. I I think it is. I think it is. All right, I'm gonna look it up. What's that? If I join the Dive Studios community text, I get to send questions and suggestions to the Dive team and get updates on new announcements. I feel so loved. Go to bit.ly backslash dive community or text 310-564-1030 to join. Um, this is from Alk Van. Do you have like, what's your favorite Korean song? Do you have a favorite Korean song? My favorite Sam Korean Kim song. song. I love all Sam Kim song. Mm -hmm. And I love Crush. Mm. I love every single one of Crush's song. So I think good. my favorite is, is Beautiful. Uh, beautiful uh, Day, is it? Beautiful Life. Beautiful Life? Beautiful be Life. Beautiful day. I think you sang that song, right? In English. I did, I did an English version of it. Um, yes. Years that's my ago. favorite song. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a good song. And um, it's, st it's still playing now um, here in my supermarket. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, that song is yeah, just so such a massive song. It's a le yeah, it's legendary. And every time I'm like in the supermarket aisle and that song played, I feel like I'm going to bump into Gong Yu anytime, like on the aisle. <laughs> I'm like ready myself. I put on my lip tint and everything. <laughs> like uh, he's going to be anywhere. He's just going to show up out of nowhere. Uh, th th this is a sign. This is a sign. That, that happened to me once actually. I'll tell you about this later. But there was a moment where I was saying hi to somebody and I literally turned my head and he was like right here. And I was like, oh. I'm so no. sorry. And I literally ran away because I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no. I'm not even kidding. Right. It was literally was, like, it was literally. Was it in a supermarket? Just tell me. No, no, was no. it in a it supermarket? It was at a bar. It was at a bar <laughs> that I, oh, I no. frequently go to. And it was, I saw a friend and I went to go say, hey, what's up? Good to see you. Blah. And I turned left 
like, and he was literally right here. I was like, ah, I'm so sorry. Um, and I just, <laughs> I just walked out. I didn't know what to do. Why were you sorry though? You were just like, I'm not I worthy think, moment. Well, I, th- well, I think I was also drunk. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I was like, I need to leave. Well, that is, I need to leave. Okay, that say not say no more. Yeah, I may have been drunk. Okay, if, so, I'm, if I'm ever, if I'm ever in career, taking me to that bar. Okay, I'll, I'll take you. We'll go hang out. <laughs> Um, this is from Twitter. Tok Parowa says, which song of yours is the most difficult to sing? Oh. A lot of them are difficult for me personally mm. because mm, it's kind of difficult to say because sometimes uh, I like the tone of my voice on that range. But mm. It's not the nece- it's not necessarily the best range that I can sing with uh, live. Ah, uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, so I like the tone of my voice because yeah, because I just like it. But then it's difficult. So something like Pemeran Utama or even my song called Jatuh Hati, which is very simple acoustic song, it's quite hard for me. And I mean, I for for people who do not who are not singers or songwriters or in music, what I think mm. Raisa is trying to is trying to point to is there are points in your voice where you think you sound the best or you really like the tone yeah. of your voice in that key. And so you'll mm. tend to write a song and record it in that key. Recording, but when you have yeah. to go perform it live, you're like, why did I do this? This is impossible <laughs> <laughs> to sing for yeah. two to three or four minutes live in this key uh. because it's really hard. Um, yeah. that's at least, I definitely have those moments where I'm like, I should never write in this key again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, last... Do you usually, um, do you usually uh, modify your key when you're singing live? I, re- I try not to. I, I rarely mm. do. Um, also because when I'm singing live on tour up until now, it's always been just a backing track. And so I only have like oh, yeah. one version to go off of. If I really yeah. can't do it that day, I just, I'll pull it from the set list. Cause I'm like, I'm just not in a good condition, mm. but I'd rather just not mm. do it than do it poorly in general. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel. I usually take it up half, half a key when up? I'm, yeah, because I like my, I like the, I like the tone of my voice when it's a bit lower. And recording. Oh. So yes, it's the other it's way. More, For me, okay. Yes. That's interesting. It's more like very… Raspy. More smooth. Yes. Like, like smooth. Okay. Jazzy yeah. maybe But when I'm even. singing live, it's just too much adrenaline for me to be able to sing more stable and a lower right. key. So I, I tend to take it up a, a, a little. Okay. So it's like the opposite… Yeah version for me. It's like I I can tend to record something very high or like super yes. falsetto y. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. how am I doing this live? Maybe I should just not do this song. Um but yeah. But your S- voice is naturally show. high, right? I think so. I think I think it's naturally high and then but I obviously when you record things you could do like just crazy falsetto things and not worry about mm. breath control or whatever. And then yeah, when yeah, I have yeah. to go live, I'm like I should never have done that because um, people have an yeah. unrealistic expectation yeah. <laughs> of what's possible. Okay, last question from a fan. What is one thing you wish people told you at the beginning of your career? And that's from That's So Free from TikTok. Oh, I haven't thought about this before. Do you have any? Um, I think for me, it's just like, Probably like you're doing fine. You're okay. Just and follow your instinct. I think that was like my mm. biggest thing is I, because I was new to Korea, I didn't speak the language very well. I was always told that what I was thinking or what I wanted to do was not the right mm. way. I was told that a lot. Um, oh, I'm sure. Which I'm sure like I had to go through these things for me to figure out my path and my, my journey. Um, but at the end of the day, I think what makes me happiest and what makes me most fulfilled in my career is when I'm fully uh, 
living out what I feel is true to me in my music mm. and in my career. And mm. so to to take ownership of that sooner, I think would have been would have been great. But I'm still happy. I'm still good where I am. But if I had if I yeah. had to give advice, that's what it would be. Oh, oh that's amazing. For me, um, I think just everything happens for a reason and, and every process is, you know, it's, it's good for you. The process is good for you. So mm. just, you know, because I regret a lot of things, like not regret, but I'm, I'm such a should have done this better, should have done this, should have done that. That's me as just like my personality. And I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of that um, heaviness in me in in my mm-hmm. career. Like oh, mm-hmm. sh- I should have done that better and and stuff like that. And so very early on, I would I would like someone you know would say to me like, it's okay to not be hundred percent all the time. It's it's part of the process. And so yeah, yeah. probably that's it. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, there you have it, kids. Advice from some some singers. Some unsolicited <laughs> advice. Just some, yeah. Um, just some okay. singer. Just some singers. Just, you know, giving you some advice. <laughs> Did you know that Dive Studios has a Discord server? Join now and meet new friends, submit questions to the podcast. You can talk to the Dive members, including myself, and get exclusive access to events and giveaways. So go to bit.ly backslash join Dive Discord to join. We'll be waiting. Um, do you have an? Do you? This is um, just a curiosity question. Do you have an accent in Korean? I th- I think I still do, kind of, but um, I feel like I've gotten rid of it a lot. Like I'll be. Uh. I think a lot of people, if they don't know who I am, like if just like a random person, like uh. they just assume that I'm Korean, Korean, and then they'll be talking to me, and I'm uh. like, I don't know what you're saying. They're like, Why don't you know? I was like, I'm. Korean's not my first language. I'm sorry. And then they're like, oh. And then you run. And then I'm like, yeah. Um, but I think I've I've worked really hard at trying to get rid of like a English American accent when I speak in Korean and when I sing in Korean. Mm. So I'm like hypercritical to the point where I'm in the studio. I keep listening to words over and over, and I everybody in the room uh. has to be like, no, we can't tell. And I'm like, okay, we can move on. Uh, that's like me in English. Like when I'm recording an English song. Uh-huh. I'm like, this still sounds a bit Indonesian English. Delete but your this English is so good. Your English is really good. And which leads me to a, a potentially ignorant question. And I apologize in advance. Like, why and how is your English so good? Um, first of all, thank you. I think I got I got asked this question quite a lot, actually. But I think it's purely because of singing. Mm. Like when I was little, I would copy, just mm-hmm. like copying like movies or um, singers and I would copy their accent and their pronunciation. And so that's how the pronun- pronunciation, I build my pronunciation and I read a lot. Mm. And so that's how the vocabulary come in. And yeah, it's just from a lot of singing, I think. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I feel like there are, even in Korea, there are some musicians, some singers who I'm like, your English is perfect. And it's because they're just really good at singing pop songs. And uh, yeah. it, it, it keeps me on my toes. I'm like, man, these people are good. They're great. And, and sometimes uh, they can sing like really, really good English, but they can't speak English. <laughs> yeah. It's also an amazing phenomenon to me. Yeah. Like, oh… They're singing so good in English. And then I approach them and say, blah, 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 in English. And then they just like, can't speak English. <laughs> yeah, but what I just imagining just this, the last five minutes. Yeah, also, no, it feels yeah, like a bit, so a it feels like, like, are you, you just betrayed me. Um, just because <laughs> I, I, I was tricked. Yeah. Your, your pronunciation is so good. I just imagine you speak English. I'm like, no, I really, I really can't. I'm like, oh, well, props to you. You can do a little bit of everything. Um, yes. I guess like before we go into a game corner, um, we have one quick mm. game for you. A question is you've you've achieved so much and you're still doing so much in your life and your career. Like what is 
what is something that you would love to achieve? Is there like an overarching goal? And what type of person or musician or artist would you like to be remembered as? Um, I think just to expand um, my listeners globally mm-hmm. is something that I haven't, I haven't really focused on the, the past 10, 11 years that I'm, I'm in, this, in this business. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, uh, I'm doing a lot of collaborations with, with other artists. And with COVID, I think we literally just realized how borderless this world is, you know, mm-hmm. that it's amazing how we can do this. And you're in LA, I'm in Indonesia. And with me and Sam, we record also virtually. It's, it's something that's um, unimaginable until now. So it's a little late for me, but to realize that just now that I, I can, you know, I can expand my listeners so, so much and so globally. And so that's, that's where I'm heading, I think. That's awesome. Um, well, we look forward to, to your continued global domination with your amazing voice and your music. Um, before we let you go, we have a quick game corner. It's a se- seven second challenge. So we're going to give you a prompter question. You have seven seconds to answer these, okay? So we're just okay. lightning around. All right, here we go. First one. All right. What are your top three favorite cities that you have traveled to? Top three favorite cities. Top three. Um, one would be Florence, and then Seoul, and then Jaipur. Okay. That's very unexpected. Okay. Yes. It, t- walk us through these cities. What was it that was so magical about… I'm more curious about Florence and Jaipur. Um, well, Florence is because it's really, really beautiful. And I love the architecture of like old um, European authenticness yeah. that I found there. And it was just food is amazing. And mm-hmm. I just got really, really inspired uh, when I was there. And the weather is amazing. And just like the, I love it, Italy. And... Uh, Seoul is because just everything, everything, um, pop culture is there and just architecture, the new upcoming, the beauty, the food, just everything I found uh, was amazing there. And in Jaipur, I also didn't expect me, myself to love it that much, but it was just, super inspiring because of all the colors and just the people and the the food the the everything i mm. i didn't expect myself to to love it that much but it was so culturally it was really really inspiring and you know i i came home with a lot of of new you know new ideas and new colors in in, in my head and imagination Super cool. I've not been to Florence or Jaipur, but I will have to go based on your your recommendation. Um, All right. Next question. What are three places that you want to travel to in the future? Three places you've been dying to go to. Ooh. Um, I want to go to Iceland. I want to go. I haven't been to New Zealand, so I want to go there. And where else? I haven't been to Africa. Oh. I really, really want to go to safari in Africa. Okay. Th- those are yes. some pretty great answers. I, I have done safari, but I've not been to Iceland or uh, New Zealand. And mine would throw in… I would throw in Istanbul. I really want to go to Turkey. Those are like… Yes. Like that's… I'm really top yes, of and, my list. And Turkey is open right now. I heard. I heard. A lot of people are going there actually. Really? Maybe it's time I need to plant something in Turkey. Have you been here? I, I have. I've done. I've been to Jakarta probably four or five times. I think. Um, played some festivals, did some shows, shot some TV nice. things. Um, but next time I will have to hit you up, and we're gonna have to grab a coffee or hang out or whatever. Yes. Um, it's so funny when when you said uh, you went to a. 
barbecue place in Cheongdam because I went to Cheongdam Garden last night. <laughs> <laughs> We're living like similar parallel lives in different cities, I feel like I right know. now. What are the top three dramas or TV shows that you're watching right now? Um, that I'm watching right now or top of my list? Or top like of your ever. list. Ever. Whatever's fine. Um, I love Tokebi. Goblin is Tokebi. my favorite one. Okay. Yes. My favorite one. Can't move on from that one. It left a all time home. favorite Tokebi. Okay. Um, I love uh, right now. I'm I'm watching You Miss Cell with Kim Goon in it, and it's super super funny. So I love that. And so one Tokebi, and then You Miss Cell, and then uh, I like The King. It's a the Netflix King. original. Oh. It's also with Kim go So the three has a similarity that it has the same actress. So maybe like she's my favorite actress right now. She she very well might be. Um, yeah. Okay. Have you watched Squid Game by chance? I have. I have. What did you think? Did you like it? Is it too I, gory or? No. It's not gory enough. <laughs> 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 like it. It's, um, I like it because it's very pop. It's ve- it's quite mellow for its genre, I think. Mm. So mm-hmm. everyone, like everyone can enjoy it. It's not too yeah. complicated. It's not too gory. But it was just like the right amount of everything. So I, I like it. Mm. What's your, uh, what's okay. your favorite game in that movie? Oh my gosh. Which, which one was your favorite scene? There's like, there's Mine way the- too many. What's yours? Do you have one? In the tug of war. It's definitely my favorite oh, one. Oh yeah. That was pretty epic. It was very smart. That was um, that was really, really epic. I, and actually in Indonesia, yeah. Uh, there's a game of tug of war every time uh, every single Independence Day. So really? that's like the our classic also our classic game every Independence Day. And I'm one hundred percent sure. That this Independence Day, everyone is going to do that trick. So like, three, two, one, everyone's going to pull back and just for 10 seconds and everyone's just going to do that trick. I didn't know there's a strategy to tug of war. Me neither. I was just like, I'm, I'm right? curious to see if people try it and if it actually works. That's what I'm going to be mm. very curious. It actually did. It actually really? works because I watch YouTube videos of like professional <laughs> tug of wars. <laughs> yes, there's a professional tug of war game, like world world champion tug of war teams. I did not know that. Um, well, I now you have me hooked. Either. I'm probably going to be on YouTube watching this, um, trying yes. to find you and Brian McKnight, and then watching tug of war or something like that. Um, yes. All righty. I think my favorite might have been the marbles, uh, not because mm-hmm. it was like such an intense. Game. It's just like that entire episode was like. Everybody had their own rules. Everybody, yeah. you could see everybody's sense of like morality or like their struggle yeah. with like what's real, what's not, like what's mm-hmm. allowed. And it was mm-hmm. just such like a, a pivotal episode, it felt like. So yeah. I think that came. Yeah, I think that scene also, you kind of reflect on yourself and what would mm-hmm. you do in that situation. And you hated that person for betraying the other character, but you was like, but I, like, right? I, I probably but you're like, would, would, would I have done the same thing? And when it comes to life or death, like you never, you never yeah. really know. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh man. Oh. Well, those are some great, great answers. Okay, so the final challenge that we have for you is: Can you say, mm-hmm. "I'm Raisa and I am on the Tebak Show oh. in Indonesian"? Hi, aku Raisa, dan sekarang aku lagi ada di Tebak Show. Oh my gosh. I'm never. I'm not even gonna try to say that because it's. It sounds very, very comp- complex. Um, <laughs> complex. Very complex. Um, very okay. complex. Well, Raisa, I've taken yes. up like far too much of your time, your valuable time, and I want to just thank you for for taking time to to be on our show, being on the Tebak show. Um, is there anything that you would like to say to our listeners, to your fans who are watching or listening? Um, as we wrap up the show. 
Um, first of all, thank you so much, Eric, for having me in, on the show. Of course. And I have to say, prior to this um, interview, I watched a lot of um, your other interviews. And you are a really, really good interviewer. Ah, you thank you. really, really listen to what the other person has to say. And you connect. And I think this is one of the best interviews I had in, in a while. So… Yeah. Props to you, thank you and thank the you. team. Um, and for everybody else, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hearing what I have to say. And if you are going to look up my music after this, I hope you like it. And please also enjoy the song, uh, our new song, me and Sam Kim's uh, new song called Someday. I hope you like the song. All right. Well, Raisa, thank you so much again for your time. Everybody, if you haven't done so, you have to check out her music. She has the voice of an angel. And I am so excited to hear Someday with Sam Kim and Raisa as soon as it drops. Um, so please be sure to show both of them a lot of love. Now, if you are new to Tabak Show, uh, this is where you can find us. We are all over the internet at The Dive Studios. Uh, you can go to Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or YouTube slash The Dive Studios. And uh, you can see full video of this incredible episode on youtube.com slash dive pods. And if you don't like advertisements, you can listen without ads at patreon.com slash dive studios. Um, and that's about it. What, what, when is, what day is this song dropping, by the way? Uh, November 12th. We have a song releasing the same day. Amazing. <laughs> no way. Yeah. So amazing. You guys should listen to Raisa and Sam's Someday. And then you should all listen to my song any other way. <laughs> it's it's the perfect playlist. Just make the two songs and go back and forth, back and forth. Um, yes. But wow. Well, you guys, be sure to check it out. And finally, this is the, the traditional question that we ask all of our listeners, or sorry, all of our guests. Could you improvise a quick outro jingle, an outro song for the Tebok show for your episode? Oh, this is a... <laughs> This is quite a pressure. Um, You're so good. I'm I'm so excited. Okay, ready? Mm hmm Thank you for listening to our chitter chatter. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for listening to our chitter chatter. Oh my gosh, she's so good. All right, guys, have a great week. Have a great day. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, be sure to stay healthy, stay safe. And we'll see you next week on the Tebak Show. Raisa, thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Holy jabezus, that was an incredible video, wasn't it? No? Yeah? Okay. Well, if you liked it, be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and turn your notifications on so you don't miss this incredible content that we have coming for you. And if you get a moment, leave us a comment. Don't go anywhere. Watch more videos and stay healthy and happy. See you soon. Bye! Don't, where are you going? Okay.